So in the previous video, we talked about what you will learn from this course. So that's all the topic we will cover from the textbook. Basically, we only cover from chapter one to chapter nine. So then let's go further to talk about what are really assembling language. So assembling language actually is the wording about the type of the programming language. Actually, we have different assembly language. Like earlier, we say in this class, we will focus on the x86 processor. For the x86 processor, they will focus on the programming microprocessor compatible with the Intel or the AMD processor. So sometimes you see when you buy your CPU, you will see they are Intel or AMD processor. So they are either running under 32-bit environment or 64-bit environment. But of course, mostly now we only do the 64-bit environment. So when we talk about the 32-bit environment and the 64-bit environment, what's different between that? Actually, the 32-bit environment or 64-bit environment just refer to the memory address, the size of the memory address. In the 32-bit environment, we only use four bytes. Remember, one byte equal to eight bit. So that's why 32-bit means four byte. So we're using the four byte to record the address for the memory. So then in 64-bit environment, because we have bigger hardware, our RAM, our hard drive is much bigger size. So that's why to mark the address for the in the memory, we need to have a bigger size. So the 64-bit equivalent to the 8-byte. So we're using the 8-byte to refer to the address in the memory. So the assembly language x86, that's why we focus on the compatible with the Intel and AMD processor. Of course, mostly now we do the 64-bit environment. But in this class, we were using the 32-bit environment, for example. Like earlier we say, the difference between that, the processor is only how big the memory, how big the space to save the memory address. So how they work, actually, they are pretty similar in the assembly language. So when we say the assembly language actually is an assembler, that's a utility program. So that's me, assembly language, that's a program. Assembler actually is a utility program that will convert the source program from assembly language into the machine language. So you can see here when we talk about the source code, source core program, Right, just like before you write the C++ code, you have the CPP file. In the Java, you write the .java file. The source code program actually for the human to read. So then you can write different source code from different programming language. So in this class, we were using the assembly language. So the assembler actually is converts your source code read by human into the machine language. So what is the machine language, right? So the machine language actually can be only used and read by the machine, by the hardware. So later we will show you the example of what the machine language look like so you can understand. So even we call the assembler is a utility program to convert your source code from the programming uh, from the assembly language. But actually we have different kinds of assembler on different operating systems. For example, in this class, we were, we were using the Mason assembly language. So that stands for the Microsoft Macro Assembler. They are including in the most version of the Microsoft Visual Studio. So that's why here, our IDE in this class, we were using the micro, uh, we were using the Visual Studio on Windows only. So you need to be careful. Later, I will show you Different assembler work on different operating system. So in this class, we only work on the Mason 
work on the Visual Studio in the Windows system. So Mason is one type of assembler using on the Windows system. But here we have other well-known assembler for the x86 running under Windows. They have the turbo assembler, we call the Tyson. Or we have Nathan, that's Nate, Nate White assembler. Or we have Mason 32, that's another variant of the Mason. But in this class, we focus on the Mason only. And in the textbook, we're using the Mason assembly language syntax as well. So that's for the Windows system. For different operating systems, for example, Linux is a personal computer Unix we use. So in Linux, we have different two different other kind very popular assembler. We call the GAS. That's the GNC assembler. Or they have the Nathan as well. So Nathan syntax actually is very similar to the Mason. Uh, so that's from the textbook. Honestly, I only use Mason, so I'm not quite sure about the Nathan syntax. But here they told you Nathan actually will be very similar syntax as Mason. So that's why we say here for those assembler, even they are all assembler, but they sometimes they have different syntax. And the Nathan actually is using for the Mac system as well. So that's why you can see here on different operating system, we're just using the most popular one, Windows, Mac system, or Linux. Actually, they are different operating system. Then you can see actually they have different assembler. So that's why on the other hand, when you have different assembler on different operating system, they are independent from each other. So that's why here we go to another question is, is the assembly language portable? What mean portable? Like earlier we say, assembly language actually still is a source code. So when we say portable, that's me. When I write a source code program on the Windows system, after I compile by the assembler, I can run on the Windows system. So the same source code, can I use the assembler on the Mac system? Then they can run correctly into the correct machine language in the Mac system. That's mean portable. You're using the same source code, you compile and run on different computer operating system. They can run correctly. If they can run correctly, right, they are portable. Unfortunately, assembly language is not portable. A language that source program can be compiled and run on a different variety of the operating system. So that's a variety, variety of computer system. Actually, that means you have different operating system. If they can compile using the same source code, compile and run on different operating system, we call they are portable. However, assembly language is not portable because it's designed for a specific processor family. So what mean processor family? Yeah, different processor family actually they associate with different operating system. You see, for example, your processor family, you have Motorola, that's every very old. We don't really use that a lot. So we have Intel. So then the Sun Spark, the Sun actually is the Unix system or IBM, they have IBM Unix system. The different process family, they are support for different operating system. And different process family actually specific work on the specific assembly language. When the assembly language source code, when they translate into the machine code, right? So the machine language for different process family, they inter interpret differently as well. So that's why the instruction in the assembly language may directly match the computer architecture, or they may be translated during the execution by a program inside the processor. So that's what we call the process, a microcode interpreter. 
So that's me. Different machine code, they will be interpreted differently on different operating system. So that's why because different process of family, they have different interpreter. So that's why make the assembly language is not portable on different operating system. So here actually is we talk about the machine language now. So when you have assembly language, you write a source file, but after they compile and run, they will be interpreted into the machine language. So what machine language look like? So here I have the example. This one actually is the machine language. So you can see machine language actually the first one they have one byte to represent the code action, the instruction code. So they have each instruction they have their specific code. So we're using one byte in the hexadecimal. So this machine code for different operating systems, they have different instruction table to match what kind of instruction that means. So then you see here, they may have some value. So this one is a direct value. That's the five we write in the hex decimal. So then you see the same thing, 86, C0 or 06. They are one byte instruction code. So this one is we call the machine language. Machine language is pure number, pure digit of number they represent in the hex decimal. So that's why only machine can understand what does that mean. So that's machine language is the numeric language specifically understood by a computer processor. So different computer processor for different processor family, they have their own machine code. So all the x86 processor understand a common machine language. So that's example for the machine language. So now let me show you two instruction for the assembly language. So on the right hand side here actually is the assembly language. So here is two instruction assembly language. Each instruction assembly language, they will direct interpret into one machine language. So that's why we say assembly language to the machine language, they are one to one relationship. One instruction in the assembly language will be direct translate into one machine language. So we can see here, even you don't understand what mean MOV space ES comma five. But can you quickly to guess if I told you MOV mean instruction, what kind of instruction mean? Right, so you will guess this one MOV mean move, right? Very good, right? So in assembly language, here I give you the quick example. Assembly language, we have instruction. So this instruction may be just three letters, but they are human understandable. So the move means you move one value to another location. So ADD, of course, you understand that's add. So add, that means you add a value to another variable. So then you change the value, right? So that's why you can see assembly language, even the syntax very different from our C++ or Java, but they still read by the user. So that's why assembly language consists the statement written with the short mnemonics like add, move, sub, so you can easily to be understand, or we have a code. So assembly language have one-to-one -one relationship with the machine language. Each assembly language instruction corresponds to a single machine language instruction. So here you can see each line actually is one instruction. So here, let me quickly to explain to you what this move EAX5 at EAX6 mean. So move, like earlier we said, is move the value. So the EAX, you just need to know. In assembly language in CPU, we have few specific registers. They occupy four bytes in 32-bit environment. So the EAX is the register. 
So when we move EAX5, that means I move value 5 to EAX register. 